Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to give you one example of how you can import CAD files and make them PLC ready in Visual Components. For example, if you wanted to import a conveyor and test it with your PLC program. Before you get started, make sure you are using Visual Components Professional or Premium because you need access to the modeling tab here. For the PLC side, I am using Tia Portal, and I've configured a PLC project, which I'm running in PLC Sim Advanced, and I'm connecting to PLC Sim Advanced using OPC UA in Visual Components. So the PLC in this case is an OPC UA server, and Visual Components is an OPC UA client. Now, let's start modeling our component. Let's maximize Visual Components, restore our windows. I'll now import the geometry. In our case, it's a conveyor. The tessellation quality can be high if you want. Import materials and textures and so on. So click the import button. And now that geometry is in a new component. And to make this component act like a conveyor, one option is to go to the ribbon here, click wizards, then click conveyor. And I'll use the default options, but I won't add a creator that can make components. I'll now click Create Conveyor Behaviors, and this adds the behaviors I need to make this component act like a conveyor. I'll close this out, go to my component graph panel, and for the behaviors, it added a statistics behavior. This allows you to monitor material flow and states. It added a path behavior, and you have inputs and outputs for transferring components in and out of the path. You have in and out interfaces, so you can plug and play the component with other components in the 3D world, as well as a sensor interface, which allows you to plug and play external sensors to your conveyor. Oh, oh. might come in handy later on in the tutorial. But for now, to make our conveyor PLC ready, one way is to add a signal and connect it to our path behavior. So when the signal value is false, the path is turned off. When the signal value is true, the path is turned on. So it's a quick way to disable and enable the behavior. I'll go to the behaviors drop the menu here. Add a Boolean signal. I'll now go to its connections and connect it to my path. We can now test our solution. I'll go to the home tab and plug and place some components with my conveyor. So under models by type, let's go to feeders visual components, and let's add some boxes. So I'll use the shape feeder, which by default will create a box. And now using plug and play, I can connect my feeder to my conveyor. Looks good. Let's now go wild, select our conveyor, click the clone command here on the mini toolbar to quickly connect a copy of our conveyor to the other end, like so. If I now run this simulation, Boxes flow from this conveyor to this conveyor. Voila, very good. And let's reset. And now connect a sensor to this conveyor. I'll go to my e-catalog panel and under conveyor utilities, let's add a conveyor sensor, which you can see here. So drag it into the 3D world. And using plug and play, I can snap it directly to the path. It's connected. And using the PMP command, I can move the sensor to a distance along the conveyor's path. My layout is working good, so now I can connect to my PLC. I have the connectivity tab already active above my ribbon. If you don't, you have to turn on this feature. So you need to go back to the File tab, Options, click Add-on, and then for connectivity, just make sure it is enabled. This will require you to restart, so you might need to click OK restart the application. So if you have to do that, make sure you save your work, save the component and the layout. And let's move on. So with connectivity, go to the connectivity configuration panel, select OPC UA pl plugin. Let's add a new server connection. And for our server, it's going to be listening to the local host on port 4840. But if we go to PLC SIM advanced, it has this IP address, so that's what we have to connect to. We'll just change the address of the server property. And it was 192.168.0.1. Let's test our connection. Yes, it will succeed, so let's click OK. 
And one comment about these PLC SIM advanced, make sure if you're using OPC UA as the protocol, instead of say another protocol, this PLC SIM virtual ethernet adapter has to be turned on. Let's now click apply. And right now the, it's not connected, it's false, but a quick way to turn it on is to click this button to connect. We get feedback in the output panel that yes, we are in fact connected to the PLC. Let's now map some inputs and outputs from our simulation to the server. In this case, the PLC is acting like an OPC UA server. So from simulation to server, let's select this variable group, right click, add variables. In some cases, you have to reload the structure you see here for the simulation and the server side. So an easy way to do that is just to point to the pane, right click, and then choose reload simulation structure. From our sensor, we're getting our sensor Boolean signal. And from the PLC side, let's go to Objects, PLC. And in our case, our sensor is acting as an input to our PLC. So under Inputs, let's map it to this sensor tag I have. Click Pair Selected. You get the chain mark here, so they are connected. From the server to simulation, so from the PLC side, we want to turn off one of the conveyors. So I'll select Server to Simulation, right-click. Add variables, and from our sensor, let's go to the conveyor it's attached to, so conveyor number two. It has that Boolean signal we added to turn on or off its path. And from the PLC side, we need to look at the outputs. And in my case, it is the motor tag I added here. Your own project might have different tags, but this is just an example. I'll pair them. And to make sure they are connected, I'll get extra feedback here in the Connected Variables panel, down at the bottom. And you can see from the simulation to server, we're sending out input from our sensor to the PLC. And from the PLC side, we're going to send in information to our simulation of when to turn on or off the conveyor. So now if I run the simulation, we can see right now the signal value is true, so the conveyor is on. That's why the box flows onto it. But once that sensor detects it, its value goes to true, and our signal for our conveyor turns off. But it does resume, and that's because in my PLC program, I have a timer that will reset the server, sorry, will reset the sensor signal and turn the conveyor's path back on. So we can quickly look at that, minimize these panels, or unpin them, sorry. Drag visual components over here. This is the program, and let's actually monitor it. Yep, it's right back on. But we have too many parts right now, so our program is failing. What we can do is select our feeder and just change the creation interval. It might be too fast here. So let's use five seconds. And now we can make that change in real time. The PLC is still running. Here comes the box. Notice the box does not flow onto this conveyor. But ho ho, we have a buddy trailing it. So we might get that same situation we had earlier. So using this input, the visual input from visual components, along with our PLC side, we can notice that, okay, there might be a problem with our program. We might need to fix that. But that's it for this video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.